Hello, hi everybody. We're here today on another episode of the Puna Lunch Club. This is kind of the breakfast club, though. With um, <laughs> Ilima Shem. Ilima uh, grew up while he knew, and then South Kona. Went to Konawana High School together for a few years. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ilima. Oh man, I'm 37 years old. Um, I was born and raised on the Big Island. I moved to Oahu, been there for the last nine years. Um, it's nothing like the Big Island. It's nothing like what we grew up in. Super different living and lifestyle, but that's where I reside now. Um, currently working in construction. So awesome. Just trying to make a living. There we we all are. <laughs> there we go. Um, so you've been kind of working in uh, male-dominated industries, construction, and the trades. Um, tell us about your experience. What it's been like being a woman in in kind of those male-dominant areas. It's been, it's been awesome, to be honest. Um, you know, women are always looked down on in a lot of these male-dominated industries, uh, HPD, a lot of males, construction, a lot of males. Even in heavy equipment, there's rarely ever any females that you see mm -hmm. running heavy equipment. Yeah. Um, but I feel like being a woman in a male-dominated industry is very empowering for a lot of other women you know, because we don't see it so often, like we don't think it ever exists. And then when you do see a woman dominating a male industry, you're like, I got to jump on that boat. So for me, it's been fun because I get to show a lot of other women that we can do what the guys are doing. We can hang with the boys. Yeah, you know? yeah. We can hang with the boys. Awesome. So what are some of the challenges you think that have uh, you've had to overcome? kind of in this line of work just being looked down on uh-huh you know like i'm doing things that i've never done before um and i learn i've been learning on the job mm -hmm. you know when i started in construction i didn't know anything and started from the bottom picking up rubbish then i started learning how to do things so um i just feel like a lot of us women just need to try to do things that we feel like we can't do. You know what I mean? And that's all it really takes. Mm -hmm. You try. Yeah. And if you succeed, you succeed. If you don't, you either walk away and, and you know, walk away with nothing or you can just get back up and say, you know what, I got this. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep pursuing it. And yeah, for me, I've been talked down on a lot. Like, Oh, you don't do that or oh for real, you do that how does a pretty girl like you get into something like that i'm like mm. it never had anything to do about my looks or anything like that um i just want to further my knowledge right so yeah there's a lot of people that stand in your way and try to degrade you and try to like shut you down but i mean it's it's all up to you you know what i mean like i feel like i am my biggest critic um so if there's anybody standing in the way of me moving forward in life it's it's definitely me you know what i mean yeah, I think I think we all are our own biggest obstacles for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, limiting factors as well, right? You limit yourself, your beliefs, and the way you view yourself and what you're able to accomplish. So interesting what you said, how you started from the beginning. I think a lot of people, uh, especially today, don't understand that. Yeah. They think it's just like, you oh, walk in. I'm going to be just at the top, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, I think I think that's uh, that's really the way to start. So a lot of times, even with me, um, my niece operates for me now and I was talking to her the other day and she's like, yep, I remember when I was picking up trash mm -hmm. on your job. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, pressure washing driveways and now she's, she's running the nine, you know, doing her own jobs, her own thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think starting from the beginning, showing that commitment and really building up is, uh, is a great way to get there. And a lot of the, the youth today are just like, what? We're not getting paid 10,000 today. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, so what are some of the differences living on Oahu and Big Island? Oh, man, huge differences, bro. Yeah. Um, just from the people to the movement, it's mm -hmm. a literal rat race. Right. Uh, when they say that the city's a rat race, they're not lying. It'll eat you up and spit you out alive if you're not, you know, ready for it. Yeah. But um, just for me, I grew up like Big Island style. Like, you know how we are here, like... You should wave to everybody. You kiss your aunties, your uncles. Hi. You make sure that your cousins or whoever you're coming with that you bring to a party or whatever, you know, everybody's acknowledging um, each other. 
it's different over there. You know, like people, there's no aloha right. and, I, and it sucks to say, but it's very different. Like, yeah, like I said, from the people to just the movement, um, you can feel every second of the day there. Yeah. You know, and here, just being back home, I've been home for about a week now, and I just feel completely rerouted and just reminded myself of who I am and where I came from. And when you're in the city life, you just you forget all of that. You know, all you're focused on is making money. What's the next job I can get? What can I do to push myself forward? But living in that rat race, you're going in a circle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're you're making the money and you're spending it just as fast as you're making it because everything there is just so fast, you know? But um, I would say the biggest challenge for me is is the people, you know? What inspired you to move there? Um, I was modeling. I started modeling um, for a company on Oahu called Twisted Cuts. And I was up there every other week to do a photo shoot. And in the process of getting all those photo shoots, I had other companies asking like, oh, who's that chick? Like, she'd be down to model for a company. So I figured if I just move myself and relocate to Honolulu, I could pursue my modeling and try to see where I could go from there. And honestly, that's the only reason why I moved was because I had a reason to go mm -hmm. and I was doing great. I was modeling for two years um, before I had my son, which is what halted my whole, you know, um, modeling endeavor. But um, I was I was doing good. I made it on three t-shirts. Uh, one company out of LA called Lotus Clothing Supply put me on two shirts, um, calendars. Uh, I was on um, covers of newspapers in Honolulu. Like mm -hmm. people were calling me from Big Island, like, hey, you made the cover. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. They're like, go look in TGI, like in, Hon uh, in the Tribune, like whatever, go check it out. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what? So I didn't really know that I was like out there as much as I was until other people started hitting me up. But um, I just felt like that's where I was supposed to be. And I did great, I had my family, and then I kind of just stepped back a little bit. Um, and when I stopped doing my modeling, I was like, hey, it's time for something new. And I wanted to learn more. Um, you know, we're hands-on. Us growing up in Hawaii, we don't really have a lot. So I wanted to make my future a little easier by starting to learn things that's gonna help me get to where I wanna be in. I know what kind of house I want when I get older. You know, so I'm just trying to learn as much as I can to save myself on all of that stuff. So currently working in construction, but my whole purpose of moving to Honolulu was to pursue modeling. So no more modeling. You know, it slowed down. I, I did do a shoot for high demand clothing. Um, I think like two months ago, slowly but surely I'll, I'll get back out there. But right now I'm just trying to work hard. You nice. know, provide. Seems like that's what you've been doing for day one. Just trying to, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, congratulations on all that. Thank you. Thank you awesome. so much. Yeah. Um, so you're doing some work with Hanai Kayaulu. Mm hmm Tell us a little bit about that. Oh wow. Um got in, um introduced to them from one of the aunties and got invited to a lot of Aina things and seeing how the city really citified the person I was. Um I was like, I got to jump on this train. Mm -hmm. So I started hanging out with auntie guys. Um, been to Hakalau twice. Uh, first time I went up, we went for the, to go check out our native birds, you know, our endangered birds. Awesome. Super awesome. Um, it was a great experience. Everything is hands-on with them. Um, Hanai Kaiulu is a group of children, a group of kids, high schoolers that are basically trying to show the world that we can have a sustainable living. And... We went to Waipio Valley yesterday. Um, we got to put our hands in the aina. We planted tea leaf. Um, we planted some pakalana on property and was able to help them clear out some stuff. So, I mean, just, I dig it, man. You know, I, I, I miss it a lot. I miss it a lot. But they're reminding me of who I am and where I came from and... I need that in my life right now, you know? Honolulu's kind of taking, yeah. taking that away a Bro, little it's, bit. It's stealing it away from me. So to find a little group of people that are rooted, are still rooted to the Aina, it, it brings so much joy to my heart. And to see that it's our future generation 
is even more killer. Yeah. You know, I'm like, Brad, where was, where was this when we were younger? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how come we never had this kind of stuff? But just to see our younger generation be brought up in Hawaiiana and our culture and trying to save our indigenous species of plants and animals, like, it's huge. So if you guys never heard of it, Hanai Kaina, ha, sorry. If you guys never heard of it, Hanai Kaina, oh my God, I can't even say it, bro. Kaya Ulu. Kaya Ulu. Yes. See, it's, you can tell it's only my second time with them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just anti this, anti that. No. Yeah, the no, village, but, the Kaya Ulu. But yeah, <clears throat> they're they're definitely teaching me a lot, mm -hmm. and it's it's been an experience in itself. So. Yeah, I think when we grew up, it was kind of different times. I almost feel like it wasn't around because it was just the way it was. Yeah, exactly. There was no need really for like an organization. You're right. Yeah. Of it, like it was just like especially it was in, in us, right? Like everybody kind of helped everybody, mm -hmm. and it was just the way like life was back mm -hmm. then. <clears throat> like now, you know, when I grew up, <clears throat> kids like we used to all play on the street. Yeah. Walk to school. Yep play on the street after school <laughs> and like now i don't see any kids walk yep. to school no kids playing on the streets yeah it, it's like it's just so much different we mm -hmm. were out there um just out in the nature yeah and the way that we were raised and that older generation it's just so much different now yeah so now i think the need for these kind of actual organizations yeah. is the only way to perpetuate that absolutely because that old way is Perishing. No longer, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So, um, it seems like you move for opportunity. Yes. Right? Yep. You're like, okay, I'm going to go to Oahu, sell a little bit of my soul. Right. For Yeah, pretty much. Bro. For these opportunities. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what do you think that looks like here on the Big Island? Like, what can we try to do to create more opportunities for the future generations, for the younger kids? Honestly, what you're doing, dirt work. Yeah. You know, getting getting younger people exposed to not only a career, you know what I mean, but right. um but just things that we we're not naturally like able to get our hands on. Mm -hmm. Um I I feel like what you're doing is definitely going to brighten up our future for our kids. Um you know, what you're doing is providing a lot of opportunities. My son loves watching machinery you know, heavy, heavy equipment and was able to get on the dozer with yeah, Hinano, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I mean, I think opportunities like that for our Kiki to get out and be exposed to things is definitely going to help them in the future, you know, give them kind of a guideline path to what they want to do. One side. Thank you. Awesome. I saw it. Did you drive the dozer? I did not drive the dozer. What? Oh, I, wait, I waited in line for a little over an hour, so <laughs> I was fried, yeah. and I know the people behind me was waiting a long uh -huh. time, so I honestly just wanted my boy to get on there, nice. and I wanted him to be with somebody that wasn't me, be with mm -hmm, an auntie mm -hmm. that was inspiring him, like, oh, if auntie can do this, yeah, I yeah. think so, I could do this too, so for me, it was more so <laughs> giving my son that experience, um, mm -hmm. you know, I could always come back and hang out and, you know, do mm -hmm. that, but... For me, it was more for the cakey, you know? Awesome. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about your tattoos. Oh, man. Uh, so my brother passed away in 2002, um, two days after his birthday in a car accident. And by the time we were able to retrieve all of his belongings from his home, all of his artwork was taken. And the oh, things man. my brother would draw was things that you would never think of that people could think of and put on paper mm -hmm. um so after i experienced that i was like you know what i'm gonna start my story on my body whether it be an unspoken story um i'm just gonna make sure that nobody can take this from me so the little things that happen oh i wouldn't say little but a lot of the things that's happened in my life is what i wear on my skin mm -hmm. um, i have a lot of stories um, a lot of places i've been things that really like touched me i've never been mana diving i went mana diving in kona and i felt like this is you know something that people don't like people don't get to experience right i felt free i felt beautiful i felt 
one with the ocean you know what i mean and because of how it made me feel and it stuck to my heart and my soul i i got a polynesian manta tattooed on me nice um my brother passed away he loves stars my first tattoo is a star with his name in it mm -hmm. so my whole body is things that have happened to me throughout my life that i fell in love with or that i've learned from mm -hmm. you know what i mean i want to take it with me awesome yeah, i got it you got a beautiful house but you kind of take that with you but you can take what you got on you right <laughs> yeah so for sure that's my story and it's still yeah. not done there you know you i you still get a little bit still? space yeah 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 still get <laughs> i mean i could find some yeah <laughs> just like shave one side right there oh uh, we're gonna go. we're gonna hold off on the face oh, but man. yeah you're not gonna get above the eyebrow yet oh uh, guilty eh? the <laughs> eyebrows is stuck I, I can swim <laughs> i can swim and wipe my face not come off yeah <laughs> yeah there but but my tattoos is um is just my self-expression it's yeah. my story of my life and mm -hmm. i know that this is something that nobody can take from me so i hold it literally very close to me and obviously it did cost me two arms and a leg so i'm taking it all with me when i'm there, gone bro, there you go <laughs> yeah you think it's kind of like a mental experience yeah 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 i think so you know people are like oh does it hurt i'm like honestly like it's the end result that means the most to me i'm like mm -hmm. i'm putting it on me for a reason and pain is only temporary yeah. so we're gonna suffer for now but we're gonna have them for the rest of our life there you we know go. unless it's a scar yeah that's yeah. gouged in you yeah. like like your tattoo is yeah. you ain't taking it with you when you're gone yeah you know so this is something that i wanted to take my story with me yeah you know? awesome i see like for me it's almost like committing to a process um like you said like you're like oh this is gonna suck but the end result is the beauty the right. story and so i think in life a lot of things are like that like you're not gonna get a great reward without paying somehow yes you know mm -hmm. so i think especially in work any anything you do you can sacrifice absolutely so if you can knowingly make the sacrifice like for me, I'm like, okay, I like I book four days in a row mm -hmm. for eight hour sessions. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is miserable. Right. But committing to success is kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're going to have to pay. Right. So you might as well mentally get ready right. to pay the price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not encouraging you to all go out there and get full body tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would hate to see you guys walking around unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was kind of bra. That she was thinks, a little deep, bro, a little skin she, deep. She thinks she can cop a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Not fully Not going committed, hard. Uh, you gotta commit and I just stay you. committed. I got you. Unless I'm your heart is like tap out, but you gotta commit. You gotta I, commit. You totally do. I got you 110. percent All right, boss. So you've been on tough as nails as well. Yes. You said that experience kind of changed your life. It did. Um, boy has it showed me that i'm my worst enemy and that i can really do anything i put my hands or my mind to mm -hmm. um the show was casted in 2001 it was the first time i was ever away from my family it was filmed in la in all uh -huh. different parts of la um i was first time i flew by myself uh the first time i was away from my family um the first time i had to uh jump into Un, like a very uncomfortable position not knowing what the next hour or day was going to be like for me but tough as nails really molded me to understand that i have a lot more to offer than i think mm -hmm. you know um with the proper pcp you know with the proper um safety gear it's endless what you can do and you know i worked around a lot of guys that like work with grinders like unsafe and then i go to this show and i was always afraid of grinders because of how i saw the boys use it you know what i yeah, mean yeah, yeah. and videos of the blades flying off and getting stuck in people's face shields or mm -hmm. you know and i'm like god I'm, I'm afraid of that stuff i don't want to touch that and then i go to this tv show and they're like here's here's sleeves to protect your arms like here's some glasses to protect your eyes and brad just opened up a whole new world for me i'm like i can really do anything if i have the proper tools and and safety you know what right. i mean and that's not something that i was brought up in construction and it yeah, was just yeah. like hey show up and work like i never owned a pair of freaking steel toes bro <laughs> until i went to tough as nails right, right so when i got there i had to break in three pairs of shoes uh -huh. as opposed to everybody else who was already broken in just killing all these challenges and i'm over there like getting blisters on my feet right. you know but 
I, I, I pushed through all of that. I powered through it all. And, you know, I was the first female to represent Hawaii, which was huge for me, you know? Yeah. Um, I was the last female to get eliminated out of the whole show. So mm -hmm. that was even like better for me to keep my head up on, yeah, you know? Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. Like I can hang with the boys, you know? Like yeah. we took out one of the boys before I was taken out. So let's go. Awesome. You know, but yeah, it was a great opportunity, great experience. Um, like I said, I, I'm more comfortable on a lot more power tools than I ever was. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a lot more confident going into things, you know, I'm like, hey, if I cannot, I'm going to ask questions because throughout that whole Tough as Nails show, bro, they were throwing things at us that I was like, that's not even in my wheelhouse. <laughs> you know, we all came in with, with our specialty of what we did and what we could do. And not one challenge was like, oh, yeah, that's what Ilima, Ilima does that. It was just something that I've done on the job. Like, right, right. you know what I mean? I was like, oh, yeah, I've. I've um, used a jackhammer. Yeah, I had to use a grinder for that. But oh, even though I wasn't comfortable, I had to like mm -hmm. chest up and be like, nah, I got this. <laughs> like, I got this. And it's crazy because it's one thing to fail. Yeah. But it's another thing to fail, bro, on national television. You know what I mean? In front of the whole world. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, it changed my life because now I'm comfortable and confident doing things I've never done. I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not... I'm just willing. Mm -hmm. I'm always just willing now. Like right. anything you got, like I'll do my best. And if I don't know how, I'm going to ask questions. Right. And if I got to go home and buy the tool that I'm going to use on somebody's job just to practice at home, then that's what I've been doing. So I got everything that you could need for, for jobs. And yeah. it's because I just like learn some more. Like I just want to save myself in the future and tough as nails has definitely mentally got me there saying look you could do anything you want to do like you literally came out here and did everything we asked you to do and you never knew what the heck you was doing but it was pretty solid because i was pretty up there all the way yeah 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 but i can tell you one thing max bro i was i was pretty bummed out on how i went out why and if i could get that message out to the world i wasn't <laughs> happy um you know i felt like I felt like I failed myself because I didn't go out sweating. I didn't go out hurting. Mm. I didn't go out like, bro, I did the best I could. Like you know you what I mean? Like you I didn't it all feel like, yeah, I didn't feel that way. So for me, I'm like, if I went out feeling building on rock wall, I knew I did my best. I knew I was fucking stacking those rocks right. as best I could. But to go out fishing for little things that no longer was in on Puka. You know, my two <laughs> items left in the hole was no longer in the hole. And I basically just had to take a knee and eat that. Uh huh. And to be eliminated over not hard labor was, it hit me, it hit me different. I you bet. Know? I'm like, I'm a hard worker. I want to go out working hard. I don't want to go out fishing for a hammer and a puka with one stick. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I did my best and it, it taught me that slower is faster sometimes mm -hmm. and i needed to learn that because i'm a fast worker and i can get a lot done but if i could slow down a little bit more i could be that much better yeah so it did teach me a lot and it taught me patience mm -hmm. so coming out of the show i was super stoked and proud of myself you know and to represent hawaii hands down it was already a win for me i think we're all proud of you appreciate that yeah and just i mean you know, I think that's like the mindset of a champion, right? Is like being on the show to most people would be a success. Mm -hmm. They would count that as a win already. But I think when you have that mindset and you're really always trying to reach for the peak, like you said, like you made it on the show, you did all these things you thought you couldn't do, but you're still disappointed in right. how it turned out. Right. Right. You're yeah. like, fuck, I should have, I should have. Yeah. Went shoulda, coulda, would have. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think that's a huge success in general, you know, coming from where you came from, um, just going on the show, like, you know, failing on national TV, how you said, I think maybe you actually won on national TV, you know? Maybe, maybe. You know? And the crazy thing is, bro, like, I didn't apply for the show myself. Right. I had family. My other house family was literally those people that sit on the couch and go, bro, this is a killer show. And then they're like, Ilima can do that, you know? Sign her and then, and then it kind of like was thrown past me, like, you know, they had already filled out the application and sent uh -huh. in and they're like, oh yeah, we was like watching this TV show. We thought, you know, you'd be good at that. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Right on. Like uh -huh. not really a, you know, reality TV person. Yeah. Yeah. And 
then three months later, they come back to me and they're like, my other house, they go, babe, um, remember that? Remember the TV show I was telling you about three months ago that, um, that, well, yeah, basically three months ago, I was, I was telling you about the TV show and I was like, yeah, she's like, well, they called back and they want to cast you on the show. Uh-huh. And I was like, hold up. Like, what the hell am I even like getting myself into? Like, what is this show even about? Like, I had no clue what Tough as Nails was. Right. And Brash pulled up an episode and I watched it. And then she, she was like, just watch this season. Brah, if my jaw never hit the ground, I was like, you guys like me do what? <laughs> on TV? <laughs> that's nuts like it was Uh just crazy stuff crazy crazy tasks that you had to perform and i honestly felt like because my family my other half and her family was like they believed in me Mm -hmm. and bro i was at a point in my life where i never believed in myself so i was like i cannot let them down like i gotta i gotta push through because they see something in me that i don't see myself Mm -hmm. and i pursued going on the show and I don't regret it. Like it gave me an experience that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. And, you know, just super grateful for the people I met along the way and what I learned about myself. So I just want to thank my other half for seeing that in me and giving me that opportunity to learn a lot more about myself. And yeah, as much as I wanted to chop them in the throat when they told me, (laughs) I, I just, I ate it and I did the qualifications and Honestly, to get on the show, bro, like, you know us. Like, we grew up hard labor. Um, so going on the show, just to even get on the show, it was more mental. Yeah. Like, I had to make sure the emails was filled out. I had to make sure the 200 meals that we ate was, like, picked. I had to make sure that every Wednesday I sent in a freaking push-up burpee video of me doing burpees for eight minutes long. And it was like every Wednesday I had to send in a video of me doing push-up burpees, mm-hmm. eight minutes worth of push-up burpees. And they're testing your endurance. They're seeing you mentally if you're like, I cannot do that. And you, you just give up. Like they want right. to push you to your limit. Mm-hmm. And if you cannot even mentally like focus on what needs to be done now, you can tap out when you get here physically. Yeah. yeah so yeah. just getting into the show itself, bro, was tough. Mm-hmm. And I got to give a shout out to my other half for that because... It got to a point where when we got to the show and I was talking to everybody else, it was like, oh yeah, my other half did all my email stuff. And I was uh-huh. like, okay, then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> and then I'm talking to the other people on the other team. They're like, oh yeah, I didn't even sign up. And I'm like, bro, what's up with this? Like, I feel like all of us in the show right now is, was volunteered. Right. They're like, Volunte- oh no, you guys can all do that. Go, we're just going to fill these out for you guys. And then we were stuck in the wrath of having to like pursue all of that mental stuff before the physical. So by the time we got to doing the hard work, bro, it wasn't even hard work for me. Right. It was just trying to figure out how I'm going to finish it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Other than that, like I knew I could do it. What kind of burpees? Navy seal burpees? Bro, push up burpees. Regular ones? Like you get down on the ground, you do a push up, you stand up, you jump, you get back down. <laughs> bro, when they told me you had to do push up burpees, I said, what is a burpee? And they said, are you serious? I said, no, what is a burpee? And they're like, uh-huh. okay, here's a link to a YouTube video. Right. This is what you got to do. Uh-huh. So, bro, I got to days where I was crying. Like, my mom was like, baby, mom go do them with you. And I was like, I'm like, fuck this, I'm over it. <laughs> and then my mom would do one, and she's like, oh, I cannot do this. I'm going to pass out and die. Like, uh-huh. you're on your own. Yeah. And even more so, I'm like, oh, I got to push through, bro. Like, I cannot have let all that hard work mm-hmm. get thrown to waste. So, it, it was tough from the beginning to the end. Like, it was tough. And even to have to face the world when you fail. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I came close. I came close, bro. I don't know if you saw that tire challenge, but I am not like I never grew up building V8s, uh-huh. like from blocks to like start them up. Right, right. I'm right. a brokeanic, not a mechanic. So <laughs> that that was one challenge that scared me. You know, a lot of things were super intimidating, but I just had to believe in myself and push through. And super stoked that I did because it did get me recognized for hard work and it didn't just get me recognized it got me recognized as a female in male dominated industries it showed them that bro like even if you're you only do flooring or even if you only do landscaping like bro if you can put your mind to something and use your heart to get there like you're unstoppable and i gotta give a shout out to tough as nose for that because everything that they put us through to the show like like mentally physically emotionally like it definitely prepared me for tougher situations in life. Yeah. So 
tough as nails was definitely tough as nails all the way through it was not soft as pillows so if you guys are sitting on your couch saying that you guys can do the show i'd love to see you guys apply yeah, yeah. because that's exactly what they said oh nah she could do that uh-huh and then i got there and i tried and bruh i did my best but you know fell a little bit short super proud that i got to rep hawaii and like i said learn everything i did but it sounds next like you time next time again you know, I think they're talking about one all stars and Bruh. one all stars team. Uh huh. I'm not gonna lie, I would definitely do it again, but I'm scared as shit because this time I'm gonna be up against people <laughs> that's coming back, just like me. Like we're right. all gonna be coming back, and the challenge is gonna be more intense. You know, yeah, who yeah, knows yeah. if we're gonna stay longer? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm down for the opportunity again, but it's definitely gonna be eating at me. To, to, to do better or if i going out make sure i going out bleeding and sweating there we go not fishing for hammers yes and not fishing for freaking <laughs> hammers brah dang awesome so you went into the experience not having much self-confidence and you came out and now you think you can do anything i know i can do anything yeah i know i can because i've done stuff that i never did before when i came back yeah that's you know? a huge takeover and and it was things that you need somebody else to do with you that i'm like nah i can do this i can yeah. do this i know i can do this and mm -hmm. i just pursue it and i'm like I did that. So are like burpees part of the normal routine now? Burpees is a part of it, bro. Like See? every single season who bro. is, oh, in my life? Yeah. Oh, no. No? No. Bro, you're done with that? I don't even know what that is anymore. Whoa. What is a burpee? How you do that? <laughs> no, not unless I get an email from Tough as Nails saying that that's what I got to do. The burpees are out. Burpees are out, bro. No. Yep. We'll stick to jumping jacks or something, you know? I just hit that shit this morning. My burpee's gonna be burps and gags. Oh. Like, no, I'm not gonna make them. I'm gonna die going through that again. <laughs> it's rough, but I'd rather find rough, like different stuff too, uh -huh. you know? Awesome. So, what's it like to be public facing in TV, social media? Um, how do you think we can use our platforms to influence positive change in the communities? Um, I feel like just collabing with, you know, local companies and stuff to promote what they have going on say for instance dirt work you know what you do for the community um using your social media is the same thing i try to do with helping people um either further brands or or um you know just sh using my platform to show women you can do it yeah you can do it you know what i mean like the things that you think you don't know you can always either learn or like you said, if you don't know something and you're not good at it, you surround yourself around people that are. Yep. And I feel like social media is a big window for that. You know, you find Huge. and you collab with people that can grow yourself and, and them as well. And then next thing you know, it's just rolling down to everything else in life. Like um, the sustainability on, on what um, Hanai Kaiulu is doing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just helping the kids and what they're doing with um you know recycling and just using our platforms like we said platforms nowadays brad it's better it's bigger like we are the news you know what i yeah, mean yeah. like we're finding out stuff before the newscast is letting us know about it so social media is super important well the news only wants to cast bad shit yeah they don't want to cast any good yeah <laughs> any good stuff so. but yeah i feel like our platforms is definitely a way to reach out and help a lot of people and advertise things that the world needs to know about and i mean i'm i'm always open for that you know yeah. i use my platforms to help local companies grow their brands mm -hmm. um and it's crazy too because i always like to know what their brands are about right you know what i mean like tell me a little bit about like what your brand is about because if mm -hmm. i don't feel like it's vibing. you know it's vibing yeah, with me yeah. i'm like nah i don't think so but <laughs> yeah for the most part i'm like that's pretty solid you know like yeah. legendary empowerment and and empire legacy and you know all these little companies i'm like they have a purpose right you know what i mean so platforms are super um important nowadays because nobody uses nobody calls anybody anymore yeah, it's more yeah. so just watching videos and and texting and stuff like that but yeah social media and our platforms is huge mm -hmm. and i think it's not going to get any smaller it's going to be a bigger tool for us in the future yeah for sure definitely social media is huge big influence um reach tons of people mm -hmm. yeah i mean so, i flew up here for your for your 
um yeah, yeah. like yeah. i came up here for dirt work volume two bro like yeah. I, I wanted to I mean, see what you were all about and it was through your platform yeah and that's yeah. how much of an impact like i flew from another island to come home to show face because one my kids were interested in heavy mm -hmm. machinery and where where in the world are you gonna have somebody sit on ah, my wallet go ahead yeah, yeah on yeah. my wallet my gas like everything that i can put up for you guys ah so for me i'm like it's worth it yeah it's worth it it's worth exposing our kids to this kind of stuff because they are a future generation and that's showing women like young little girls that yeah. they can do stuff that their dad was doing yeah you yeah. know so i mean what you're doing got me here from mm -hmm. your platform yeah and like we went to high school together but it's so funny because like I had no idea what you were doing. And Same. Then through social media, I'm like, oh, look what Ian Yeah, doing. we reconnected. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. crazy. It's it's definitely the new the new thing. For sure. In our, in our era. And it's funny too because my uncles was I remember uh, we just got iPhones. Uh -huh. And I was like, Uncle Hair, look, you can FaceTime and actually see who you're talking to. Ah, I don't like learn, I don't like learn. And it's like yeah. bro, like it's there's so much to learn about technology and and our platforms and like really what it can do for you yeah people are living their lives off of their platforms like oh. what's a job you know what i mean <laughs> what is a job what is dirty hands so that's I mean, why i didn't like work didn't like pick up trash exactly yeah and you know what that's why they're just gonna be insta famous yeah and that's why they're fat yeah. sitting at home eating one donut there we go you know making a video about it exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Foodie. or mukbang yeah exactly yeah. it's crazy bruh <laughs> So, so what is like the next five years look like for me um hopefully running on dozer <laughs> yeah hopefully moving back to big island yeah you know? uh well we got you on that for sure uh but it's definitely something i'd love to learn you yeah know? um yeah it's funny because i just told my other half i said you know i would love to make running heavy equipment a career like mm -hmm. my body is broken yeah. for as long as i can remember i was building like setting back set for rock walls yeah, yeah straight yeah. out of high school bro i was right. working for a rock wall company mm -hmm. you know and then like hospitality and all that stuff but i don't know man just i'm stoked to where i'm stoked at from where i came from to where i'm at now yeah just how we're raised not being afraid to do anything mm -hmm. definitely molded me to keep going Awesome. So move back from Honolulu. Thinking about it. You're thinking about it. Yeah. Thinking about it, you know, <laughs> expanding my, uh, I mean, yeah, I could build my house, but I'm going to have to call you for a push them. Uh, i am like, hey, Max, uh, I think so. Like rent your dozer. I can push my lot. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy how, how you speak things into the world and, and things start happening for you you know yeah. i was like i would love to make that a career and you're like right those are with your name on i'm like yeah. babe i don't know she said sounds like you might be moving back and i was like i don't know it might be that way because yeah. this is an opportunity of a lifetime like who's gonna who's who, who you know nowadays is willing to just say oh you like learn how for run equipment come like now you gotta go to school for it. you got like no people that are willing yeah and i mean it it just goes to show that obviously i'm not sitting on my ass like, yeah obviously yeah, yeah. i'm not somebody lazy that would get an offer for that you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so i mean i'm not close to the idea uh-huh and i feel like my arms is getting pulled because i'm like i get to go home and learn something new yeah. and something big you know and mm -hmm. and again empower women on stuff that they never thought they could do yeah you i know lo i love working with women yeah it's awesome you know i have a whole team of them where <laughs> we can we can we can uh you know see things that you guys don't see you know yeah. what i mean and and i feel like that's where we're like kind of shut on a little bit mm -hmm. you know i'm like oh yeah women welders i'm like bro yeah but look at their welds compared to their welds you know what i mean it's like yeah, we yeah. might have took three minutes longer than you but yeah you know we took our time for a reason yeah so i feel like moving into that would be just even more so solid for women to be like oh that easy or or I could do that too. Like I'm honestly inspired by Hinano. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I'm like, bruh, Hinano, what she's doing right now and through your platform is showing so much people that it's possible. You know what I mean? And then holding your Dirtworks event and seeing her teach adults how to drive it and then yeah. how to like how she's going with the kids and giving them like, you know, an experience of a lifetime. Like yeah. I don't think I don't think my kids would ever get in a dozer if, unless I'm 
operating one again right, you know right, what i mean right. or if i'm around people that are doing yeah. it because we just don't have that opportunity so yeah you know i'm pretty stoked and grateful that you're even throwing that on the table bro so yeah. i appreciate you you let me know but i appreciate you as well yeah hirano is definitely a soldier bro she's i love she, that she might just be 20 maybe i don't even know she maybe she's 20 but Ah, she's worked she's worked i know this isn't like child labor but she's worked three <laughs> weeks pretty much three weeks seven days a week um but she holds it down for sure she never yeah. complains like probably she's posting videos of her with mucinex like, yeah before yeah work. <laughs> and it's finding something that you love doing and and love doing it with the people that you do it with that's huge yeah. you know what yeah. i mean but she's definitely on the right track and she's inspired me not even gonna lie i'm mm -hmm. inspired you know, seeing her, I'm like, if I feel the way I feel, bro, I know plenty of other people is like, yeah, if that's possible, if she's like, she's showing us that that's cool, that that's possible. We can all yeah. do that, you know? Yeah. So just keeping opportunities open and your eyes open and, you know, just watching other yeah. people and learning from their mistakes and learning from their successes, bro, that's, that's where it's at, you know, just watching watching and learning awesome so maybe we'll see you here big island running a nine yeah maybe you guys will Killer. just see that <laughs> tell you we could clear a lot a lot uh, pretty quick i'm sure i'll, I'll get there yeah yeah you know i'll show you what's up and then definitely passionate let um, you go. about learning and you know because like wanting to learn even more so bro because it's a male dominated field mm -hmm. like i've never seen chicks in um, in heavy equipment yeah like my friend back home she runs a excavator mm -hmm. and i was like bro that's pretty cool and she's yeah. like bro when i was a little girl i knew that that's what i wanted for do and mm -hmm. she pursued it and she works for big end companies in honolulu digging their trenches for them yeah. while all the boys is in the hole with the shovels bro <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna be that girl that's gonna be like no 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 take that out of the hole <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm going to be the one pointing fingers in my machine. Couple more scoops, bro. Yeah, a couple more scoops. Yeah, yeah. Or I might just be the one doing the labor for them. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm open to opportunities um, always. Awesome. And grateful for everybody and anything that comes my way. Yeah. So just staying open-minded for sure. Killer. What is it like to build a house on Oahu or buy one these days? Bro, Nowadays, you're looking at a million dollar house that still needs to be touched up in places with one beachfront of homeless people. Bruh. That's what it's looking like now. It's like. So Puma is cherry. Then. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at $700,000 <laughs> houses that you already got to invest at least 200000 in it to bring it up to what you want. So. Right. It's for one, unaffordable. Uh huh. Second, the ones that we can't afford, you're not going to want. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right, right. And yeah. yeah, we're getting pushed out by all these people that are buying all these homes in Honolulu, paying us to fix it up, but nobody's right. living in there. Who lived? Oh, it's just empty? Empty houses. So that's, oh, that's like why. Vacation our, kind. And that's why they're saying that they want them to pay more taxes because mm. their houses are just sitting for what, you know? Like our residents could have purchased it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just sitting houses. So it's hard. It's different. Um, it's just a rat race. Yeah. It's the rat race of what can I get out of you? And the whole, oh man, Hawaii is so expensive. I can't fix my toilet today because I got to fix my roof. And it's like, welcome to Hawaii. Yeah. If yeah, you think yeah. that it's hard for you, that's why we all living multiple families per home. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah, we can't afford yeah. to just buy a home and let it sit. Yeah. You know? I but hear you. yeah, just there's a big difference. Like, they just don't understand. Yeah. They're just buying up houses and kicking us out you know yeah and leaving them empty yeah 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 and i mean the homeless problem is getting a lot worse too out there yeah oh wow, and, last time nurse told yeah i went there's all tons brad's just got worse and worse yeah. like i don't see it getting any better and honestly one of my friends is on the beach from from kona uh-huh and i'm like in oahu in honolulu brah like just recently found out that they're living in 110 on the beach and oh. i used to look at that place and brah like i'm like oh disgusting and then when it would rain, I'd always be that person that's like, ha ha, yeah, it's nice and free until you guys get hit with one storm and we're right, inside right, and warm. Right. And then I got to learn that one of my good friends from Kona that I would hang out with all the time is living on the beach there. And it's only because we're getting pushed out. We cannot afford to live in our houses. Like, gratefully, I inherited the house that I own, but 
if it right. wasn't for that, I would have nothing, right. you know? I'm in that circle of that rat race too. Like everything I'm making, I'm spending. I got two kids. Like I'm just trying to survive up there as well. But I feel like Honolulu only has jobs to offer, but the Big Island has more fulfillment of life here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I could do without owning a house and just renting and substituting my mental health for, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I, I'll, I'll like pay for that. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. So, you know. Well, you can get a house here for like a third of the price too. So you probably could buy. Yeah, I mean, and even one. if I was like, you know, pushing my own lots and, uh, yeah, and you know. Building your own and house. And building my own houses right. and connecting with yeah. the. Yeah, Brian, that's what it's about now. It's about the connections, yeah. you know. And it sucks because it used to be about who you know. And it's slowly starting to turn into like how much money you get. But if you stay connected to those people that are still rooted, it's about who you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Honolulu, it's more about how much you get. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'd rather move home and, and be rich in life yeah. than rich in money in Honolulu. Definitely, it won't buy you happiness. It won't. Yeah. It won't. It'll sure. actually start up a lot of stuff on the opposite side of happiness. You yeah, know? yeah. So yeah it's I definitely gotcha. different there yeah for sure yeah for sure 100 percent. awesome well um we appreciate you coming sharing your mana'o with us your experience Reja. um it's been our pleasure to have you yeah you want to leave these people with anything else um if you guys aren't already follow max Gaines. he's doing a lot of great stuff for the community and the people um Thank you for having me. Uh, this is my first podcast. Uh -huh. I am super stoked to have it with you. Um, and yeah, just thank you guys for the opportunity and the open arms. Appreciate awesome. It. Appreciate it really much. You guys all heard that. We get the exclusive. Uh, exclusive. You know I mean? exclusive. Yes, uh. <laughs> Appreciate you though, Max. I appreciate you too, Ilima. Thank oh, you. Oh, hail Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wildcats. Yes, uh, I was trying to sing the alma mater in the bathroom this morning, and I couldn't get past uh, the first verse. I was like, oh, I think I got to get into uh, remembering what my alma mater was. Oh, yeah. Bruh. I was like, oh, yeah. it's been a while. Well, I, you know, it's, bruh, I was so bad at Kona Wine, I had to go back to Kauai to graduate so my mom could watch me. Shut up, because, I was, you know, <laughs> the conversation we had, and I was like, Max, we both went to Konawana, but I know I'm not that freaking tech tardish. Uh, how are you making your videos? Uh -huh. I was like, Brad, my social media is so high. And I'm like doing collabs for all these people. And I'm like, how is Max doing that? Like his videos are so freaking cool. I don't understand. And, and his word of advice was, if you're not good at something, put yourself around the people that are. Learn, you know, and that's what a lot of us don't want to do. We're like, ah, they're good at it. They're not gonna help me. I'm just gonna walk away. Like, no, put yourself around them. Learn. Yeah. You know? Learn. Yeah. Absorb. Take it all in. Yeah. But I'm definitely gonna walk away from this podcast with a lot to think about. Um, definitely a full heart and just grateful that I had this opportunity to even come back home for your event, um, Dirt Work Volume Two, and to be a part of letting my son experience something that he might not see in a minute. You know. So thank you for what you do for the community um and what you're doing for individual families bro you're making dreams happen and awesome. i appreciate you for that definitely an inspiration and brad he it's it's fun because we have history and it's always great to see people that come from the same background and upbringing succeed yeah you know and i might not be living in a mansion i might not have this or that but i did learn a lot along my way and I'm going to get there. I'm yeah. going to get there. I think success is more defined by the person you are yeah. than the material things mm -hmm. you, you have. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are shitty people who have a lot of material things. Yeah, you're right. So I don't think, you know, I think that's something too uh, out there. If you're young, you shouldn't judge success by what someone has. Oh, this person has this, so they're successful. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of person you are, how you treat other people, how you live your life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's how you define success. Yep. So I think in that way, you're very successful. Thank you. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank awesome. you for today. Yeah. Thank you. Solid.